an old bad audio again. When I, when I listen to this one again, I often can't understand what's been, what's been said. Uh, Luc Pigeon, 16876 times. Uh, I have uh, five documents that I'd like to uh, depose with the city clerk Perfect. for archival purposes. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> Uh, okay, la question. Well, I'd like to have some. Okay, la question. Yeah, okay. just can't. For a question, yeah, my question. I have three questions. My first Deux question. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm used to the procedure. So, uh, I just want to give the names of the documents because I, I like to have them registered here on the microphone. Uh, Radio Canada, an error d'importance. Radio Canada made a false claim about the amount of tons that were emitted with the forest fires up north. Okay. The they do some catalogs this megaton of carbonic at 1064 megaton of CO2, plus the two fois the dix qui a été affirmé. They 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 said that we had the forest fires emitted three and a half times less than what they did. Okay. False reporting. And it, it is 13 times more emissions, annual emissions of Quebec that were emitted there in June. So we are in serious problem, and the forest fires are still burning because they're still giving us smoke alarms. So this is proof, I believe that. And the other three, just give you the title. We're dangerously near some climate tipping points. That's how serious the situation is. Climate collapse could happen fast and soon, as early as in three years. Three years from now, my dear. And uh, to support my question, which will include uh, slavery, American capitalism is brutal. You can see that now with climate change. Capitalism is a brutal system. And it's what's going to do humanity, I'm sorry to say. So I'll go to my first question. Thank you for allowing me to give you the title of my documents. It's very important. You got here. So the exploitation of slavery as a source of energy that destroyed the dignity and well-being of unfortunate good human beings for hundreds of years may have ended, but the savagery continues. This time with the exploitation of fossil fuels as a source of energy that destroys the environment and brings us ever closer to climate collapse. My question, why are we allowing politicians to continue to promote the use of fossil fuels for the same reasons that they previously promoted, promoted the use of slaves to create rich elites who could live a life of luxury? And why are we paying increasingly high prices for food, rent, and the hidden tax of inflation that makes life more difficult for the most vulnerable among us and benefits only the richest 1%? Okay, that's good. My second question. Okay. It's pretty hard to answer that one too, you know. Why are politicians more interested in business as usual at any cost, rather than preventing the climate collapse that is on the horizon, and that could happen soon and fast? So why do they want business as usual at the time when it's supposed to be in a climate emergency? Five years ago, they declared a climate emergency. They have done very little. Okay, I'll call up Lucien. I will respond courier. That's really not the way that the other news parties proceed, my friend. They they I'm sorry, but your question is so philosophical, it goes from spectrum A to spectrum Z. You know, I can answer the question, but I don't, I know you see, you won't be satisfied. So, we got the question, we recorded your okay, question. Okay, listen. And I'll answer you briefly. Uh, may I uh, read the what you answer next next month on the on the You could, you could. I don't want. Thank you, sir. So that's your uh, second question. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I did both. Yeah. Okay. I'll come back. Okay. Perfect. Getting back to climate change and the five-year climate emergency that doesn't seem to be an emergency for some people. Uh, could I ask you, Mr. Mayor? If you could answer either yes or no on the following question. Go ahead, Michelle. I want a yes or a no. 
Am I wasting my time coming here in the hope that you will finally see? Let's take, take a moment of that. Thanks for your support, guys. That maybe you will eventually see that the present savage capitalist system is leading to the end of civilized society that we have known. The best question you asked. <laughs> yes, or no, because I already know the answer I would give, but what is your You see, we, you know the work we're doing in Kirkwood. Okay. A yes or no would be uh, Appreciate it. <laughs> Listen, you're welcome to come to Are City Hall. Are you leading up to a yes? You're welcome to come to City Hall. Mr. Mayor, yes. Anybody <laughs> else want to answer yes? I'd answer that. She likes your I, email. I, I read all your emails. You do? I do. I do. I'm I never expected that from you guys. I'm on the Environment Committee. I read all your emails. I watch all your videos. The last one made me cry. Holy cow. Very, very sad. I have to tell you, you come every meeting. And I can respect that. I respect your 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 diligence and respect, passion. I respect your passion. I do. I do. But you need you need I just want to clarify one thing. We are a small municipality. However, we work very hard to encourage and to uh, educate all our residents on various topics so that we can conform to the safety of our environment, if you like. So when you're coming here talking about global leaders and whatnot, are, we're not we're not we're too small to even consider that. But what we can control is what happens in our own municipality. And I have to say that we have a great environment committee, we have a great administration, and we have great ideas. So we are moving forward and we're taking the right steps. So I want you to rest assured that it's not coming to deaf ears. We hear you, we feel it. I'm a mother of children. Most of the council members have children or grandchildren, and we don't want what on, what's on the video to happen here. But you have to understand the scale of what you're presenting and what we can do in exchange. So we are doing our part here, and I want you to know that. Well, well thank, thank you very much for that response. Can I make a short response on that? Then? Can I add something, Mr. Dijon? What? Is it okay if I add something? Oh, sure. Hey, you know, Nancy, we were, she came on to the uh, Environment Committee because she is passionate about it. And as the other gentleman pointed out earlier, you know, we take we want people to take pride in their properties, and that's part of the Environment Committee. We have the Kirkland and Bloom, which we try to get people to promote. You may not see a lot of the efforts, and sometimes it is frustrating when you see that people don't adhere whether it's speeding whether it's uh, maintenance or just basic care you know and then getting back to the environment there's many programs that we try to reduction of water usage uh, many things that we try to do and you have to keep hammering away and not giving up as you do <laughs> sometimes but i appreciate that question tonight though that one put a smile on my face and it was you know more relaxed so we could give you uh, uh the time and a response so continue but just try to be respectful and you know, ask ask questions that we maybe take some time to think about, questions that we can answer. Can I respond to both of those? Sure. Well, uh, Nancy, uh, I know just like Montreal always tells me, they're doing all they can for climate change and the environment. And I respect that and I know it's true. Uh, and about Mike uh, saying that uh, you more or less refer to the population of Kirkland to the people. It's not the people who are responsible for climate change, it's the politicians, because people don't have the power. The politicians are, have an economic, uh, what I call a fascist economic system, okay, that drives climate change. They have also, they, they have a policy. They make the policy that creates climate change. So I never blame the people. I always say it's the politicians. Goes back to 1979, 1980. When it was a decade that we had a chance to stop climate change, and it was it was uh, blocked by the White House. The White House could have acted 30, 40 years ago, and we wouldn't be in the best we are today. Yeah. So it's not the people, Mike. Right? It's not the people. It is the people. Are, 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 no, are, sir. I won't ever accept. Can I just uh, say one thing yeah. and tell me if you believe maybe I am right? Uh, right? Twenty, thirty years ago, when we were when or actually. 50 years ago, when we were children. Oh, and, the lake, years ago. and the lake was completely polluted around Montreal. 
Have we made any significant gains in 2023 since that time? Oh, yeah. yes or no? <laughs> no, yes, I know there's Okay, no so in, I, I know it's for the water, the speed and the timing, but the consist, being persistent and consistent uh, over the next 10, 20, 30 years, it is a gradual. You don't have uh, that amount of I time. I understand you're that, but I just want you to know it is the people okay. over time as they become educated. But it does it does take time. Okay, I think I've taken enough time, uh, Mr. Mayor. But you're welcome. And I really appreciate the exchange we had this evening. Excellent. And I hope we can have more exchanges like that. And I, I just oh, I, see. Yeah. I just want to know your position. And uh, you know mine. And uh, I will not change my I oh, my yeah. mind about what I think about climate change. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good evening. Yeah, you did. And I hope to see you all again next month. Yeah. If we're still uh, alive. Okay. We're still alive. Okay, any more questions? Any more questions? No.